Hello. It's good to be back. Don't be fooled by this bit of a tan. I haven't had a cheeky week in Ibiza, you know. I, uh, I've i been doing what I don't really do that often, and that's sitting in the garden, enjoying the sunshine. And I'm sure that most of you have been doing that as well. And judging by your pictures and your videos, you've certainly been making the most of the good weather, and that's really good to see. Well, I hope you've been okay. Uh, we've had an extra week to get even more content in. So I think we could start by having a look at your photos. It's great to see Aurelia. She's been very busy doing her exercises and then all of her written work, baking as well. Very, very busy. Great to see. There's a recipe going up online from Esme this week about uh, how to make some superb cookies. Violet's been showing how hard she's been working, sending all her postcards. Another very busy week for Anya. Plenty of home study, but she did have time to have, have, enjoy the good weather and have a barbecue. And then becoming quite an accomplished little chef with a home cooking you can see there sharing the slide with Alana who's been doing her science research and Alana's still been practicing her musical instrument and it looks like they've made a a, a castle there out of uh, cardboard that's very creative and looks good fun too Philip's been very busy he's been uh, learning Spanish on his iPad which is great doing some marvelous artwork and then uh, he ordered some caterpillars online and he's waiting to see them turn into butterflies Ruby and Paige have been extremely busy doing uh, FaceTime conferences, learning different languages. Looks to be a bit of a party going on there with all the teddy bears and uh, getting out in the good weather as well. Here's Alex, Alex Sherwood. He's been very busy doing his geography and his outdoor art. He's made time every week to clap with the NHS. And Mrs McLaughlin will be pleased to see all that science going on there. No rest in the Marlowe household. They've been doing their keep fit. Yoga classes now, I think they've moved on to. And then Chloe's been tending to the pond in the back garden, as well as entertaining unusual visitors doing the uh, artwork and then going for a, a walk that looks like around the engine pond. Here he is looking happy, doing a wide range of activities, actually. He's written work and he's on his iPad and then turning his hand to baking. Got involved with the gardening, doing his jokes, and importantly, he's enjoying a bit of downtime as well. It's not that you're not allowed on your Xbox, uh, it's just as long as it's part of a, a balanced routine. Now Matilda's been able to go on a, a, a company or dead to work day. She's been helping look after the golf greens. They look in immaculate condition, and then she's been doing some home science. And Liliana Lukaj has been extremely busy in the garden, keeping fit, and then uh, taking a dead on at Domino's. And we don't get to know the result of that match, but I think, looking at Liliana's face, I think we can nearly work that out. She's also been doing her written work as well. Thomas has been doing a combination of tidying the garden and then playing in it. A very active young man and doing his bit for the street, keeping it clean and tidy. Well done, Thomas. And once again, Mrs Rhodes tops the class for her beautiful display of the photographs. All the Rhodes children have been very busy with a good mixture of activities and even making time to get the paddling pool out to enjoy the good weather and getting out on their bikes. And for our friends that have been in school, of course, they were in over the Easter holidays as well. But the staff had arranged for an Easter egg hunt. That looks to have been good fun. And then they all took the time to make Captain Tom a 100th birthday card. And then a big thank you to Mrs Kane, who sent some uh, photographs in from school. Ms Alana has become a bit of a robot. And we can see that Tom's been baking and also learning about flowers. There's no rest up for Bernie. She's been very busy making uh, birthday cards for must be Captain Tom. Baking and lots of beautiful written work. And it's much the same for Matilda. It's non-stop there, with the schoolwork. And Alex has been discovering wildflowers while he's been out on his walks. And then coming back home and doing research on them. And Lucy proudly showing off her written work and some superb art there. And the science hasn't stopped in school. For those children that uh, have still been going to school, they've been doing all sorts of experiments to see what makes things water resistant. And then this was nice in the week from our colleagues in the foundation stage. They just prepared a little poster for the children of foundation because they're missing them so much and they just wanted to say hello. Don't forget you can send work for your class web pages to the key stage addresses or if you've got fresh content that you want to share with us here at SBTV, send that to the G Sharp at St Bede's CatholicPrimary.co.uk and we'll feature that next week. And it's beginning to feel a little bit like we've forgotten what it's like to be in school. 
but with the aid of technology we're able to see what we might look like when we're able to get back. We do love to see your clips they, uh, they do make us smile and it's great to share them with everyone these first two uh we've got anya who's been inspired by i think it's a very popular app at the moment and uh, violet with a bit of balloon modeling can i pick that doll no can i pick that doll no can i pick that doll two three bang she shot me one time bang she shot me two times bang 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 unicorn I'm going to try and make a dog with a balloon. That's what it turned out like. Very impressive skills, that Violet. Uh, next up we've got Alfie and Archie. And it looks like Archie's following the instructions from Foundation and he's been and discovered some worms, but I don't think he's too keen. And then Abby's been doing, I'm very impressed to see this Abby, been doing his uh, coding. Yeah. What does it feel like, Archie? Jelly. Jelly? Come on. Wiggly worms. <laughs> now, as you know, yesterday was Captain Tom's 100th birthday and he's raised an absolute fortune for the NHS. And he reached the milestone age of 100 and there's been lots of activity from you at home and uh, in school as well sending him birthday cards he got thousands and thousands of birthday cards it was really good to see but the hucknell family went one step further and they wrote this beautiful poem <laughs> Now it's his uh, birthday, he's a hundred years up. old. We just Tell want it. to say a, a big happy birthday. Do you want our pride of Britain? Let's hope our livelihood is given and the recognition we deserve. With a bit for a flyover to mark his hundredth birthday. Well done to you and all that donated for this much for you cause oh, as we challenge this pandemic. And then, of course, we're all getting long hair, uh, and that even includes our pets. Poor Cooper, he was uh, feeling the heat a little bit. So the Wassell family decided to give him a little trim. It's <laughs> because Buddy wants to come in. Oh, he's a good boy, Cooper. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Mrs. Wassell's not quite got the landscape filming yet, but we'll forgive her because uh, it really helped Cooper. There's quite a lot of uncertainty around at the moment, as, as you know, and a parent has asked what's happening about Whitby. Now, at this moment in time, it hasn't been cancelled. We are planning to go in September as normal. But I think we've got to prepare ourselves that things may be different and the Whitby trip might not happen this year. We'll still do something really, really special for you in year six because it is a highlight. We'll, we'll do something, but we have to be guided by what the authorities say and, and whether the uh, youth hostel will actually be open and things like that. So Mrs. Wassell has said, if you want to, you can freeze your Whitby payment. You don't have to pay any more right now. However, if you want to still pay, you can. If the Whitby trip is cancelled you'll receive a full refund 
um, but we, we will be doing something. I know we will be doing something because it's such a highlight of being in year six. Lots of them say, actually, it's the best thing about being, coming to St Bede's. So in answer to the parents' question, we genuinely don't know. We're certainly not saying it's cancelled. We'll just be guided by the authorities. It's far too far away to say anything for sure right now. As soon as we do get any definite information, we will share it. Uh, don't worry if you're in year six. We will do something throughout that academic year to make it really special. Maybe special and unique and no other year group will ever do it again. And fingers crossed, it, it won't be cancelled. It will just be maybe postponed a little bit and we go a little bit later in the year. Maybe a summer trip. Now, just a quick thank you on the... Um, we'll meet again video we'll play this next week that will be the PE day celebration on, on the 8th it's uh, going to be a lot of work i think quite tricky to piece it all together to get everything absolutely right but it will be spectacular um it, it's going to be very very good so thank you to everybody who took part a special big thanks to those who stepped in at the last minute we were let down by a couple of people uh, and they didn't send their videos in but luckily our reliable crew jumped to our rescue uh, and we've got it all filled and, and we'll share that next week it will be special might remember the weekly challenge was for you to perform an outstanding magic trick and it was worth five gold coins and we got 11 entries and uh, I was just going to take a little bit of each one but then it doesn't do it justice you don't get to see the whole trick so sit back relax be prepared to be amazed here we go these are the magic tricks I'm also going to show you another magic trick with this box and this card. So first things first, so here's this joker and it is black and white and I'm going to make this this black and white joker colourful. And I'm going to sh and I'm going to shut this here and say the magic words. Stand back everyone. Expect him to come now let just check. Does it work? Yes, it did. Now it's one. I'm going to do, do a magic trick for this homework for Mr. Sharp. So, the first magic trick is a bit ma magical. So, here, so he's a pom pom in this little, in, in this coffin here. I'm going to shoot it. Open it up. Where has it gone? <gasps> so, but where has it gone? Here it is. In here. Thank you. Welcome to Penny's Magic Tricks, where I will make this 10 feet disappear.
trick. On. Off. On. Off. <laughs> On. Off. On. Off. <laughs> Today, my magic trick is to make this bit of liquid move into this cup. Hello everyone, this is a magic trick that I wanted to show you. Both of my hands are empty and I need an assistant to help me with this. Today, I'm going to make this 50p coin disappear. I mean, not by spending it. And ta-da, it's gone. Now, I'm going to make it reappear. And it's back. Now, I'm going to go spend it. Hi, what I'm going to do today is a magic card trick. All I've got here is an ordinary set of cards. See? No trick ones. Dad, are you ready to do some magic? Yes. Okay then, let's do it. Which ones? I'll pick the middle ones, please. Okay. You've got the five of spades. All that we're going to do is put it back in the pack. And for those who are watching and aren't sure, five of spades. Now, because we're homeschooling, let's spell out the card. F I B E F I O F Was it spades? Yeah. S P and because it's magic, let's throw in some magic. M A G I C. Five of spades. I'm going to make this toilet roll disappear. First, I need to say the magic words. Abracadabra. Wow, it's disappeared. Weren't they brilliant? Told you they were really, really good. Special guest appearance from Ronsky there. Delivered in his usual sombre manner. Really good. Good to see him. Now, it wouldn't be fair for me to pick the winner. 
so I gave that task to Mrs Wassell's son Luke and you may if you live in Kimberworth have seen Luke around and about because he's the uh, postman for the area and I sent him the video and this is what he had to say Hi Sam Beach, my uncle Gav sent me some videos of some magic tricks it's been a tough decision I've had to look at them two, three times but I have to think the winning one had to be number three just because of the effort they put behind making the magic trick and if it's good enough, it looked like it could have fooled Penn and Teller and Dynamo. So well done, number three. So number three, Matilda. Excellent. Brilliant delivery of your trick. You went to a lot of effort to get dressed up and uh, create the mystery of magic in, in your front room. Uh, very well delivered. I think we've got uh, a natural entertainer on our hands there. Very well done. It puts you at the top of the leaderboard, joint top and well done to everyone they were brilliant to watch you've obviously practiced them and we've got some really talented young magicians on our hands here well done really good so to this week's challenge uh it's going to be for four coins because it's relatively easy to do but there are a couple of very important rules with this one as you saw with Cooper earlier, and, and myself included, we're, we're all getting to the stage where we're probably going to have to cut our own hair or get someone to do it for us who isn't a professional, so to speak. So this week's challenge is for you to style someone's hair. Oops! Most people's hair is probably a little bit longer, so there is the scope to do with this. And this is purely styling with gel or foam or whatever, um, plaiting, braiding, generally just making hair look sensational. For it to be a valid entry, we need a before and an after photograph. But there must be no cutting at all no cutting with scissors no no shears nothing i i do not want loads and loads of phone calls from mums and dads who are very angry because you've cropped the hair of baby brother or whatever no cutting it's just styling and you can have a great fun with this i'm, I'm sure but you've got to decide what you what role you're going to play in this you can either be the model and and sit and let someone do the styling on you or you might have to get some a, a victim well i'll say a victim volunteer in your house uh, to be your model and, and you can style their hair remember there can be no cutting it's just styling spiking plaiting whatever um if you cannot get a volunteer or no one is willing to help you then you might and you can do this, uh, you can use technology, a little bit like what I've done here with our Mrs. Taylor. That's what we need to uh, have a valid entry, a before and an after picture. But ideally, someone will volunteer in your house and uh, you can you can practice your hairdressing skills and come up with something sensational, I'm sure. And if, if the only person in your house is a little bit like Mr. Freeman and they don't have much hair, then you're going to have to improvise. You're gonna to have to be really creative. Maybe you might have to stick things on, uh, wool, whatever, or do what I've done and use technology and give them some hair. There are lots of, uh, it reminds me of someone there, Mr. Freeman, I can't remember. There are lots and lots of apps that, that, that can do this type of thing, lots of free apps. Uh, so it's up to you. You can either do this real world or, or use technology. Uh, but uh, for it to be a valid entry, a before and an after picture showing how brilliant you can be at styling someone's hair or having it done to you. The more creative, the better. Now, I'm not qualified to judge this and pick the winner. Uh, so what I'm going to do is let my niece, Heather, who is studying to be a hairstylist, uh, I'll let her look at all the before and after pictures and we'll announce the winner next week. Four gold coins. Uh, well worth a go. It should be a lot of fun. Um, I think it's going to be, knowing Heather, it'll be the most outrageous, uh, but she will be looking for some talent as well. So have fun with it. No cutting, remember. Please, please, no cutting. Uh, just style, and we'll look forward to seeing your pictures.
just a little reminder on the long haul challenge maybe you are still working on your books a little bit each week uh, it is a long slow process but i do want to fill this digital library uh, full up with you, all the books that you've been writing about during this lockdown experience so please keep working on them uh, if you want to send any any sort of draft ideas or copies of what you've been doing then that uh, I'll gladly have a look at them or your teachers can can look at them for you as well I've been doing a little bit more work on the imposers uh, not that much to be honest but uh, I've done a little bit more and I've started to develop one of the other characters as well so they'll be ready for the new year five in September now a little bit like what we were saying earlier about Whitby there is a lot of uncertainty around at the moment and there's no real sign at the moment when we'll be going back to school if at all this academic year and if we can go back will it will it be uh, just in small groups uh, much smaller class sizes we just don't know and i was talking to mr freeman earlier this week and we were getting a little bit concerned about if we don't get back to school and and we aren't able to do all the things that we would normally do uh, for year six things like the year-end production and all the videos and things like that so we started to have the idea and it is just a very very early idea about could we stage something where you film it individually and put on a production at the end of the year now it's not likely that we're going to be able to do anything like we did last year with olivia because we probably wouldn't be allowed an audience and we might not be able to, allowed to get that that close to each other so we could either get sad about that fact or we could think creatively and try and come up with a solution let me just play you this i'm sure you recognize this from uh, bartek's banana shack but watch watch the dancing bit at the end Now, what's interesting about that lineup of dancers is they weren't all stood together like that. They filmed it one at a time in the pod in front of the green screen. And, and then I've used technology to, to line them up like that, that. They were all, all dancing. So they weren't all there. I don't even think they were. Some of them weren't even filmed on the same day. So me and Mr. Freeman are thinking, could we possibly do something like that for a year end production? maybe film little bits in front of green screen. I, I don't know, we need some ideas and we need some inspiration, but we will try everything to make it work. So it's kind of, if you're in year six, it's kind of over to you. Is there a, a story? Is there a short play? Is there a, a funny comedy or something like that that we could get the script for? And then give the script parts out and then think about uh, how we could possibly Maybe it could be a film that we make this year rather than a stage show. I don't know, but we need to give it some thought because what we don't want to do is just let this academic year drift away. So if you're in year six, give some thought to a year end production and let's not rule anything out yet. Let's think a bit blue sky. And even if you can't get together, but you need to be able to have dialogue between two people, as you can see there with the dancers, it can happen. There's been some great artwork this last week. Uh, here's some from Alana and Molly Swan did some lovely uh, words and cards, which I'll, I'll mention later. And the very talented Mrs. McDowell showing off her, is it cross stitch? I don't know. It, uh, it's very, very clever. It looks very effective when it's finished. And she sits there rightfully proud holding her work. Now, don't forget, it's really important that we share your birthday announcements. Do tell us if it's your birthday. Uh, just as a bit of trivia, really, in the week, it uh, it was YouTube's birthday. They were 15. And you might want to remember this. It's a good quiz question. 
The first video that was ever uploaded was called Me at the Zoo, viewed 90 odd million times. But 15 years, it seems like YouTube has been around a lot, lot longer than that. I know some people, that's all they've ever known. Don't even watch TV these days, they just go straight to YouTube. Now, Edward Sherwood turned five, and this happened on St George's Day on the 23rd of April. And he looks very happy there, surrounded by lots of toys and cards that he got. I hope you had a really great day, Edward. And Morgana in, in Red Unit, uh, she had a birthday, and it sounds like, uh, well, they sang happy birthday, and I'll play it to you in a minute. But it sounds like they had to use a little bit of technology as well. We're all having to think differently, maybe utilising technology. All these things I've been saying for a long time. I'm ready, I'm doing it. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday dear Morgana. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> Happy Sorry, I should blow the candle out now. And then it was a very big birthday for our Mrs. Aston, can you believe? She was 50. I know you can't believe that. She doesn't age. She looks today like she did 30 years ago. Timeless. And these photos prove it from when she was a little girl to how she is today. There is just very, very little change. Sweet, angelic, adorable face. I hope you had a great day, Mrs. Aston. And celebrated it with those around you that it was safe to do so i uh, i've never been so well off because i'm not having mrs chadbourne every two minutes prodding me with a stick demanding money for somebody's birthday uh, but it does mean that we've got a lot of catching up to do so i think we'll just have to have one big party to celebrate everybody's birthday uh, but i hope you had a great day i'm sure you did uh, and even the children in school were able to mark it for you birthday to Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mrs. Aston. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Yay! Yay! Now, staff challenge time. It was these two. I'm sure you remember what uh, they were saying. Mrs. Wassell was asked to run around the Astro. I keep on saying dry, but it's the Astro, the blue bit of the Astro, in 90 seconds, but running backwards. Didn't even know if it was possible, but she never shies away from a challenge. Shall we see if she could do it? Let's have a look. <laughs> Three seconds to spare there you are see could be done never want to shy away from a challenge as our mrs wassell in fact she did that within minutes of the challenge being laid down so well done you've got yourself your take uh, the other challenge that last time was mr freeman and he was tasked with doing a hundred keepy uppies uh, again didn't even know if this was realistic 
but let's see how he did. Let's go again. If at first you don't succeed, children, try, try again. <laughs> 20. Thirty. Forty. Fifty. Halfway. Sixty. Seventy. Good rescue. <laughs> 90, Ten, one, nine, two, eight, four, seven, five, six, five, four, three, two, one. Control that, Mr. Freeman. Well done, sir. Now, do you think that he could do that first time of asking? Mm. Mr. Boo, they actually included the outtakes as well at the start of the clip. And this is the actual situation. Oh dear! Oh, it's a good effort. Not bad for a warm up. Oh, bad one. I'm trying to be too clever. Attempt three. <laughs> and he's even missed. Rubbish. Oh no, 60. But there you are, that's Mr. Freeman living and breathing one of our promises. Perseverance, not giving up. He kept going, kept going, and eventually got there in the end. So well done to you two. Brilliant. It's done. It's over. Um, I'm still getting some flag. I can still feel a sharp pain in my side where Mrs. Bun Clark and Mrs. Chadbourne, they're still prodding the pins in the effigy listen i'll make you a a, a, a deal because there's quite a lot of email stuff coming through if we get to show 13 episode 13 i will do both the challenges in episode 13 can't say fairer than that um when it comes to this week we have a brilliant suggestion from apony I'll read you the email that Appany sent us. Uh, hello, Mr. Sharp. Hope you're well. Appany would like to forward her idea for the teacher challenge. She would like to see Mrs. Williams do the after eight mint challenge. This is where you have to put an after eight mint or something equally chocolatey onto your forehead and move it into your mouth without using your hands or anything but your facial muscles. We really hope Mrs. Williams can do this. And with all the Easter chocolate around, we are sure that she will have plenty to practice with. Fingers crossed. Thanks. Appany. Oh, I'm sure it's not the first time Mrs. Williams has had a chocolatey treat roll down the face, but uh, superb challenge. Well done, Appany, for suggesting that. Uh, you've a, you, you've a week to do it, Mrs. Williams. Well, I'm sure you could do it today. I'm sure you'd be equally efficient at this. Please try and do it sooner rather than later. Um, I think also, let's give Mr. Swan the opportunity to cancel out the red cross he got so so we'll set this to mr swan as well and if we get both the footage back we can we can turn it into a bit of a race i could put uh, both the footage together and we'll see who manages to to do it first so, so if whoever's filming count you in three two one uh we'll film it perhaps you might have to coordinate with each other so that you both use exactly the same there's not that many after eights knocking around at the moment maybe a square of dairy milk or something like that uh, so that's the challenge, and they're the two. Mr. Swan and Mrs. Williams get chocolate from the forehead into the mouth using only facial muscles and gravity. Now, you keep sending your suggestions in and your email ideas, and we'll get them on the screen. Just a reminder that there are lots of sources of online help. Our school webpage is a great way of keeping in touch if you need any emergency help. And there are links to outside agencies as well. Now, worth a look this week, uh, happening tomorrow, in fact, our friends, our very good friends at Grimm & Co are having a very, very special occasion on YouTube. 
and you might want to tune in. It's uh, happening tomorrow at two and it's called Here Not There and it's a range of very famous actors, actresses, uh, even some Hollywood stars and they're going to read out the stories and the written work that anyone who has visited Grimm & Co have produced. Now I know lots of you have been to Grimm & Co as part of school and many of you go uh, weekends too or, or did do when it was open. So it'll be well worth tuning in to see if any of these famous people actually read out some of your work or maybe the work of someone you know. Now we all seem to be developing our animation skills and our art skills uh, while we're in lockdown and Disney have released a superb website called Disney Magic Moments and it's where you can almost get like a one-to-one -one tutorial from a from a professional Disney animator. They show you how to draw various characters and, and, and the principles involved and it's a step-by-step -step guide if you want to follow along. Well worth a look. And we can thank Paige for sending in this uh, suggestion. It's called starmangifts.com and it's from the wonderful people at SpaceX. They've produced a free colouring book and you can order that, uh, I would imagine it's an instant download and there's some stunning pictures in there and you can colour them in and it follows the progress of the spaceman that was put into the car and blasted into space. So it's quiz time, hopefully you've got your pen and paper ready. Uh, just before we go on though, I, I, I must explain, in order to win the gold coin, you have to get all 10 correct and be the first person to get the answers in. So if someone enters before you but gets one wrong, they're out. It's the first person to get all of them right and be the fastest to get your uh, email entry in. I don't think I fully explained that uh, ever, silly Mr. Sharp. Anyway, uh, let's go with this week's questions. But before we do, let's check the answers from last time. And here they are. Question one, what was the capital of Poland? Well, that's Warsaw. Agra is the city where you'd find the Taj Mahal. Question three, the logo was Spotify. The young boxer in four grew up to be The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Question five, it was the flag of Ireland. Question six, the line, the witch and the wardrobe was written by C.S. Lewis. Seven, the ex-member of staff is Mrs. Powell. The real name for Principal Skinner is Armand Tanzarian. The logo was Wigan Athletic. And this confused a lot of you. Question ten, what was special on 2002 202420? Well, it was the release date for the new £20 note. Now, there were only two entries last week into the quiz. The first was Esme, and she slipped up on a couple. And the next one was Olivia Neal, and she also slipped up on a couple of questions. So nobody won the quiz last time. So because no one won last time, a little bit like the lottery, it's going to roll over. So this week it's worth two gold coins. Uh, we'll keep the lines open all day for you to email in. This is Speed is important, remember, but accuracy also. So if you're ready. Okay, eyes down, pens at the ready. Question one, what is the capital of the United States of America? Question two, who is this actor in his much younger days? Question three, this is part of whose logo? Question four, who is this cartoon character? Question five, which planet is closest to the sun? Question six, this is the flag of which European country? Question seven, who is this ex-member of staff? Question eight, what number is on the side of Lightning McQueen? Question nine, what do you call a group of lions? Question ten is the tricky one, starting at one and then working up to two and so on. What's the first number you get to that contains the letter A. As nobody won the gold coin last time, there's no change to the leaderboard. Remember, it's the first person to get all 10 correct. Send your entries into G Sharp at St. Bede's Catholic Primary .co.uk and we'll keep those lines open all the way till five o'clock today, the 1st of May. Good luck with that. And I'm sure someone is already typing away and getting the answers in. Two gold coins, remember, well worth going for. Uh, just a reminder then that uh, it's the before and after picture is the weekly challenge. Uh, please, please, no cutting. I don't want to get into any trouble of parents and things. How well can you style hair is the thing. If you're in year six, give some thought to uh, maybe a year-end show. 
a virtual sports day, things like that. Uh, let's not just rule things out. Let's try and think uh, of a way around while we see what's happening. And remember, you can keep sending your work to your key stage teachers and any fresh content can come to me for the St. Beads. Uh, if we can, again, try to avoid duplicating, that will really, really help. And um, just as a one off next week, I'm afraid I'm going to have to close everything at 12 noon on Wednesday uh, because I've got to try and get everything done. I've got rather a busy day on uh, Thursday. Now, finally, then, um, we, as you know, we had to skip a week last week because of the very sudden and unexpected death of my dad and uh, it was a really big shock and, and quite unexpected and I think for a few days I, I, I was in complete shock and, and then that just turned to sadness but honestly now I, I whenever I think of him I, I can just I just smile because I've just got a lifetime of, of and an endless supply of happy memories uh, that I can draw off. And his, his death wasn't anything to do with this horrible virus that's going around at the minute. Uh, he, he died naturally and uh, just at the end of a very long and happy life. And uh, I have to remind myself of just how old he was because he was born actually in the middle of the Second World War. My granddad lost his leg in, a, in, in an accident when he was 18 so their battle was fought out on the home front and uh, life was as normal as it could be during wartime uh, so my dad was born right in the middle of, of, of the war and he was a superb dad he uh, he worked all his life to provide for his family we didn't want for anything while we were growing up we didn't have a lot but what we did have he worked hard for both him and my mum uh, in fact I don't even begin to imagine how how they did it but they did and uh, it's left us with a, a, a wonderful bank of memories that, that is bottomless pit of memories, to be honest. There was my older brother, my two sisters, and, and the baby of the bunch was me. And some of the really happy memories that, are, that, that, that stick in my mind are the Christmas times, the most amazing holiday adventures when we all used to go to France and explore that country. And he worked from the age of 14 all the way to being 61 years of age. Uh, never missed a day and then enjoyed 15 years worth of retirement uh, really happy loved his sport really enjoyed following Rotherham and horse racing and boxing in fact he'd watch, he'd watch any sport as Mr Wassell would always say he'd watch televised international tiddlywinks from Thunsker if that's all that was on the television and he really he really would and in that time he watched his six beautiful grandchildren grow up to be fine young adults who all worshipped and adored him and he adored them and they made sure of that because uh, if ever he did try to nod off during a visit he'd, uh, he'd get a prompt little reminder that there was no sleeping during visitation <laughs> now i'm going to let you into a little secret about my dad and uh, you may or may not know this but when he was 19 he won uh, the big prize in the lottery and I'm not talking about the silly national lottery where all you win is a ridiculously big bank balance and nothing more. No, he won a far greater prize than that. Uh, he won the heart of the love of his life when he met my mum in the lottery that is life. And it's an amazing story really because my mum had gone on a, a trip with her family. They were helping the Cubs. They, they were involved with the Cubs in Rotherham and they were taking them on a trip to Sherwood Forest on a bus trip uh, run by Riley's and my dad was just bored one day with his friend and they decided to go to town and get on the first bus for the first organized trip uh, and it just happened to be that same bus that my mum was on they didn't know each other just some divine spirit brought them together um, and it was love at first sight really and they bus got to Sherwood Forest and, and when it was there there was a little tea stand and my mum noticed that and she plucked up all this courage and she went up to my dad and said uh, would you like a cup of tea and, and and not a lot changed for the 58 years that they were together 
Can you believe that? It's an absolute fairy tale. That really is the once upon a time moment of this beautiful long life they had together. And today is a really, really special day. The 1st of May, 1965, 55 years ago today, they were married at St. Bede's Church. Uh, and like I say, it's been an absolute long, happy fairy tale life. And if I were to write it down or, or, or be given the chance to, to pick it, I don't think you would script it any better. I can't begin to tell you uh, just how proud I am of him, his wit, his wisdom, they will live on forever. And although it was a, a massive shock and I was, we, we were all really very, very sad, uh, the St. Bede's community came through. Our extended family uh, were very, very kind, sent us lots of poems and cards and best wishes and prayers and we absolutely cherish them. We've read them all. They've really, really helped. And so on behalf of my brother Darren and my other sister Julie uh, and myself, I just want to thank you very, very much. They really are and will remain very special. Uh, but there are a couple of other people who also just want to thank you in person. Good morning, children. I would have liked to have thanked you all individually for the beautiful cards, letters, poems, prayers, and the love heart that you sent me recently while I was extremely sad. Your kindness has helped me to feel so very much better. Thank you. And God bless. Good morning, everyone. I just want to say a huge thank you to all the children for sending me the wonderful cards, prayers, flowers, videos, everything that you've done. It's been absolutely fantastic and really given me a lift this last week. I've read them and I've reread them and they've been a huge comfort to me. So thank you very much, everyone. I will be back in work this week and I'll be watching Beads TV. I really miss you all, so keep sending me things and let me see what you've been up to. Thank you everyone. Bye. And so then to finish with this week, uh, I just need you to do two more things for me. The first is just something to remember, and it's that your health is your wealth and that your family is the most precious thing that you can have. And so with that in mind, today I just want you to give everyone in your house a big hug extra special tight squeeze tell them what they mean to you and they'll tell you what you mean to them it's so very important that you do that and as often as you can and during this lockdown use the opportunity to make the most of being with your family film as much as you can take photos it's always always important to do that they'll be a great comfort to you at some point um, look after each other, stay safe. Thank you, thank you for everything that you've done for us this week, and we'll see you next week.